Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Tigers Baseball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Schulte. It is Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022. The trade deadline hath come and gone. And we'll get into that a little bit. I am I am not too disappointed in Alavila for the moment. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Uh Let's get to it. Injury updates. Um, good to see um, Willie Peralta coming back. He was out due to a uh, strained hamstring. Um, it was good to see Jose Cisnero come back last week. Uh, most impressively and most importantly, it was good to see Matt Manning come back tonight. He went five, battled, gave up two runs, but really wasn't too bad. Uh, considering his fir- that's his first major league start back since April uh, 16th. And also good to see that Austin Meadows was in Minnesota. Apparently they liked what they saw from him. He likes how he's feeling. He was taking batting practice. He was running a little bit. Um, so that was an issue or was a thing. And um, he's getting ready to go out on a rehab assignment. Uh, from what everything is pointing to. Um, He's disappointed in in himself. A.J. Hinch is disappointed in him. It's kind of hard to be disappointed in a guy for getting hurt, though. So I think it's more a matter of he's disappointed. when, When Hinch says he's not happy with the situation, I think it's a matter of he really wishes that... Um things would have worked out differently. I don't think he's a, he's he's mad at Austin Meadows. Oh, you went and got yourself hurt. So you need to, uh, you know, do whatever. Uh, no, no, I don't think A.J. Hinch is like that. I don't see him, him getting all that cranky about a player getting hurt, being that he was a former player. He knows how injuries work. He knows how, how, how the game works and how things happen. And then look, it's a freak situation. He had vertigo, and then he had COVID, and he hurt himself rehabbing from being out with COVID. So you really can't... Honestly, Austin Meadows hurt himself doing what he was told to do by the team doctors and the team medical staff. So how can you be upset at a player for doing what they're told and getting hurt while doing what they're told? You really can't. Uh, let's get to uh, a couple of other moves. Um, Andrew Chafin was on the restricted list for the weekend because of the fact that he's not vaccinated and Detroit went to Toronto and you cannot enter Canada if you're not vaccinated. You cannot play baseball in Canada if you're not vaccinated. So you can enter Canada, but you have to quarantine for, I want to say it's 10 days up here. Uh, that would have served no purpose. So you can't play when you're in Canada if you're not vaccinated. He's not. No baseball for him. And that's all right. He he wouldn't have probably pitched uh, in that series anyway, considering that Detroit lost three out of four and Chafin generally doesn't come in when they're down. He he does, I suppose. I suppose they would have pitched him in in the sixth inning of Saturday's game that that the Tigers lost five to three. Um, but you really never know. You just, you really never do know. So I guess it's possible. Highly unlikely. Um, Eduardo Rodriguez is actually throwing bullpens. They expect him to be back by the week of August 15th. I don't see that. I think that's a little bit of a bit of a, a bit of a, a, a rushed timeline because he's going to have to make three starts. He's going to he's going to make one start in Lakeland. Um, he's going to make two rehab starts in in Toledo at least. Um, given his five days re- his five day the five day rest requirement that we have for starter well four days of rest requirements that they have for starters that puts him. Eh, let's say he goes out and gets a rehab start on the fourth which is Thursday. And then again on the 9th, which is next Tuesday. 
and then again on the 14th, which would be um, two weeks from a uh, week from Sunday. I guess it's possible, but really only three rehab starts for a guy who is supposed to be the ace of your staff and who you expect to eat up some innings. I don't know. Basically what you're doing then is you're stretching him out in the big leagues. And it's a lot more difficult to do that than it is to, to do that um, in the... Uh, It's a lot more difficult to do that in the big leagues than it is to do that in AAA. So uh, that's something that that we'll watch carefully, and I'm pretty sure AJ Hinch will watch it carefully as well as 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 Alavila and the rest of the Tigers front office. So let's get into a couple things. Last week, the Tigers took two out of three from the Padres, including a 12-4 win and then a four to three win. Um, Tarek Skubal pitched really well on Wednesday, left with a deficit, a two nothing deficit, or sorry, a two one deficit. And the Tigers came back and, 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 and won the game four to three. He got a no decision out of the deal. And then of course, Detroit goes and loses three out of four to Toronto. But in that series, in that three, those three law in that, that four game series, uh, we saw we saw Brian Garcia, who was the Tigers' closer in 2020, actually get a start on Friday, and he pitched pr- quite well by all accounts. I didn't actually watch the game; I had things going on. Um, but he pitched quite well uh, by all accounts. Uh, you know. Um, Tyler Alexander pitched all right on Thursday. Um, the bullpen really kept them in that game. Um, you know, Saturday and, and yesterday, well, Saturday and Sunday's games were not blowouts. Uh, Drew Hutchison pitched okay on Sunday. Garrett Hill pitched pretty well on Saturday. You look at Garrett Hill and you think about the fact that that offense that Toronto has, an offense that put up 28 runs against Boston in one game, an offense that averages six and a half runs a game and has done so for the last 60 games, 60 plus games. And Garrett Hill goes in there and and pitches quite well. Um, it it kind of makes you look. It really gives you a, it really gives you a positive outlook for next year. Now, I know I said this last year about Casey Mize and Tarek Skubal and Matt Manning. But these guys are, these guys, look, the Tigers are going to need a very solid and stable pitching staff, and they're going to need more than five starters. Every team does. And you're not going to be, you're not too nervous about the pitching side of things for the next few years for the Detroit Tigers. Tarek Skubal went out yesterday, um, pitched five shutout innings through 77 pitches, and then went into the dugout and said, I'm gassed. I got no more. I don't have anything left. I can't, I can't throw another pitch. If I throw another pitch, it's going to be it, bad. Things are going to happen. And he later said that his arm was fatigued. It turns out the reason that his arm was fatigued is because there is inflammation in, the, in his left forearm. Now, we don't know what that could be. He doesn't know what that could be. He seems to think that he's going to make his next start. A.J. Hinch is a little more cautious than that. So we'll see where that goes. As I said before, Matt Manning came back tonight, pitched pretty well. Bo Brisky is slated to come back and rejoin the team this week. He pitched pretty well in a rehab start on Sunday. Your rotation right now as it stands is still pretty much up in the air. It's probably Scooble, Manning, Alexander, <clears throat> um, Garrett Hill, and Drew Hutchison. Uh, 
And so we'll see where that, how long that lasts. Um, some minor league moves, uh, or well, some, some other roster moves. Um, Detroit DFA's Derek Hill to make room on the 40 man roster. Um, they also bring up Zach Short from the taxi squad. Um, that is after trading Robbie Grossman to Atlanta for a low level prospect in Chris England. Now, let's go ahead and get into the trade deadline stuff because this is where this is where I'm sort of <sighs> I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure how to feel about this. And I'm not sure because the deals that Alavila made were revolved around ex players with expiring contracts. Robbie Grossman is no longer a Tiger. Thank you for your time, sir. It was great. He gets traded to Atlanta for a... When I say low level, I mean low level. The guy's still pitching in the Florida Complex League. He's still pitching in single A. All right. The guy's name is Chris Englund. He's a left-handed starter right now. Everybody's a starter in, in the minors for all intents and purposes. He was drafted just a couple of years ago. I want to say he's like their number 21 prospect or something like that. Their 21st ranked prospect. He's not very high up on the list. Uh, so that's what Detroit gets back. Um, of course, the, the Braves take the remainder of Robbie Grossman's salary, which isn't much. He had a two-year, $10 million deal. $10 million a year, so... Guess is he's probably owed about $2.5 million on that still. So it's not really a big deal for Atlanta. It's not a bad deal for Atlanta. But the deal that concerns me, and this is why I say I'll 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 reserve judgment on Alavila until tomorrow. And in all honesty, I I I'm not even gonna go that far because I, I really think that Alavila just he wet himself and um because he couldn't get a deal done and he just took whatever was first available. Michael Fulmer goes to the twins. For a double-A starter. I will say that again, folks. Michael Fulmer goes to the Twins for a double-A starter in Sawyer Gibson Long. Now, Apparently he pitches pretty well. He's he's a refined he's got he's got a little bit of work and to do, but he's he's got a decent change up, a good slider, and a mid nineties fastball. And he's in double A. He was he was drafted in twenty nineteen and he's in double A now and, and he'll slot into that eerie eerie Seawolf starting rotation right away. The problem that I have with this deal. Who are the Tigers playing this week? The Minnesota Twins. Who did Michael Fulmer get traded to? The Minnesota Twins. Who could the Detroit Tigers be batting against? Could have been batting against tonight. Probably will be batting against tomorrow. Michael Fulmer. So you just traded away a guy who you know is a proven lights-out reliever. 
late inning guy, eighth inning, eighth inning, seventh inning, eighth inning, can get you a save when when Soto is is not available. So he can sometimes close games for you, and he's lights out. He's got an amazing slider, a 92-mile-an-hour, 93-mile-an-hour slider, and oh, by the way, a 97, 98-mile-an-hour fastball. Can command both, and oh, by the way, um, is able to throw a pretty decent curveball as well. And just absolutely buries righties. And you trade him not only to a division rival, but to the team that you are playing right now. You're in the midst of a three-game series with the Minnesota Twins, and you send them Michael Fulmer. Way to go, Al. You really showed it again, didn't you? It's... (laughs) I'm not disappointed in what he got back. For Michael Fulmer, because Michael Fulmer is at the end of the he's his his contract is up at the end of the year. I'm not disappointed in what he got back for Robbie Grossman. Gro- Robbie Grossman was hitting 205 this year with two home runs. So to get a low level prospect back for him, okay, I can accept that because he's on the he's on the he's on the end of his contract. Your odds of re-signing him are are pretty slim because where are you going to play him? What are you going to do? Sign him and then put him in the minors? No. Again, Michael Fulmer is 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 at he's on an he'll be a free agent at the end of the year. I get that. I can respect that. I can accept that. But could you have found somebody else to trade him to? My name is Al Avila. And guess what? I'm going to send the team that we're playing against one of my best pitchers. Because I don't have a clue. This is what we're dealing with in Detroit. This is who we have running the show in Detroit. And Chris Illich seems to think that he's doing a good job. Oh, I like the progress of the Tigers. I love where they're at right now. I think they've they've had a little bit of a rough start, but I like where they're at. You like being 42 and 63? You like being 21 games under 500? You like the fact that you're not even going to sniff the wild card this year? You like the fact that your team is going to lose pro- probably lose 100 games this year? You like that there, Chrissy boy? There's 59 games left. In order for Detroit to, con- to, to, to not lose 100 games, they have to win 21 of those 58 games. They got to go 21 and 37. They're not going to do it. This team's going to lose 100 games. But Alavila is doing a great job. No, he's not. This team should have been winning 90 games this year. At least 85. This team should have been in contention for the division this year with the way that it's going, if not the wild card. This team should at least be in third place. Not in a dogfight with the Kansas City Royals for last. But Alavila's doing an amazing job. He's doing such a good job with this team. So tomorrow when Fulmer comes in in the top of the eighth and strikes out the side, probably throws an immaculate inning in doing so. 
goes through Baez, Cabrera, and Haas, or Candelario, or Harold Castro. What, what are we going to do? What are we going to think? I know what I'm thinking. You couldn't have found a National League team to trade him to? You couldn't have found an AL East or AL West team to trade him to? You had to trade him to the guy, the team that you're playing against this week? God, you're an idiot. Don't be surprised when Austin Meadows comes back uh, if Victor Reyes gets sent down to the minors. Um, I say this because... Willie Castro is playing very good defensively at all of the positions that he's been playing at. He's played third, second, and short. And he's played left, center, and right field. He has not played first base yet, as far as I know, nor has he played catcher. Victor Reyes can play left, center, or right. By my count, that's three positions as compared to Willie Castro playing six, doing it well, hitting a little bit. He's hitting around 248. So don't be surprised if Victor Reyes gets sent down to the minors um, when Austin Meadows comes back. Your everyday outfield will probably look something like Akil Badu in left, Riley Green in center, Austin Meadows in right with Willie Castro coming off the bench or Cody Clemens coming off the bench. Because let's not forget, Cody Clemens can play left and right as well as third, second, and first. So that's five positions. So just based on position flexibility, the odd man out is Victor Reyes. So there you go. I want to thank Anchor for the distribution of the podcast. If you are getting us on Anchor, check us out on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel as well. Thank you very much to the YouTube people for letting us do that. If you want to get in touch with the show, you can at Podcast Tigers on Twitter, or you can email the show at TigersBaseballPodcast at gmail.com. It's the world's longest email address. I'm very proud of that. We will see you Sunday. Thank you very much for listening, everybody, tonight, and go Tigers.